Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Points of Articulation. My name's Dave, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. It's the first video of 2023, and the first video of Season 8. Let's start with the Hot Wheels Star Wars Starship Select, Imperial Star Destroyer, released in late 2022. So the Imperial Star Destroyer was first seen in Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, and ever since its debut, has been updated and modified throughout the original trilogy and also spin-off material. We had the animated version in Rebels, the Mark I in A New Hope in Rogue One, and then we had the Mark II in The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, and the reason why I'm bringing all that up is that this version is the Mark II. We have the small communications tower right here, and then the superstructure is very Mark II-ish. And I say two-ish because it's very slanted. Like when I think of a Star Destroyer, I think of steps. Like it goes out and then drops, out and drops. This is very, as you can see, curved, which uh, the original trilogy never really had curves. It was a lot of angles, very industrial. But having said that, this is still a fantastic model. The Hot Wheels Starship Select line that I've been reviewing since last year has really been blowing me away. I'm not a fan particularly of the connection ports of their stands, but the actual stands are glossy black and the ships are unbelievably detailed. I looked at the Razor Crest, the TIE Fighter, X-Wing, and Slave One, and I wasn't disappointed. I thought they looked fantastic. My only issue was the stands. But besides all that, this here, this Star Destroyer, is a really fantastic model, and I can't wait to look at it. Before I do that, though, for the size, it measures in at about 4 and 3 quarter inches, or 12 centimeters long, so it's a nice size vessel, really cool. So if you're new to my channel, what I'd like to do is go over the mold, talk about the key points, zoom in and show everybody what you're really paying for with those fine details, then we'll discuss the paint, Put it on a stand, compare it to some other ships, and then we'll be done. So let's get started. Alright, let's go over the mold. Like in all my videos, I will go over all the major sections of the vessel, and then we'll get a nice close-up look to see those fine details. So before I begin, I just gotta say, this is a very, very heavy piece, and rightfully so. I'm very happy about it. We have die cast on the top, die cast on the bottom, and you can feel it. It does have some plastic pieces. We have a plastic front, plastic command tower, and plastic engine section. Besides that, though, it's all metal, and uh, it's amazing. I love it. A lot of these Starship Selects vehicles are all die-cast and are heavy, and that's awesome. You really get what you're paying for. Now, speaking of getting what we're paying for, let's go over the major sections. We have our superstructure which looks pretty good. I think they took a little liberties here, but sharp. We have our turbo laser batteries or ion cannon batteries on the sides. Looking cool. We have our command tower, which has our bridge, comms tower on the top, and shield emitters or shield generators on the sides. Those are the balls. Looking cool. We have our neck, engines in the aft. And then on the bottom or ventral section, we have three rivets holding it together, connector port for the stand, our primary hanger, secondary hanger, and of course, copyright crap. All in all, very detailed and very beautiful. So now, let's get a closer look. And now, getting as close as I can to the Imperial Star Destroyer, let's start looking at the mold here. Now, in the front of the ship here, we can see that it's a different color than the main body on the dorsal side and also the ventral. And that's because in the front, they used a different type of plastic, and you can see the definite difference here. And it's a little softer. I wouldn't say it's like a rubber, but it's definitely, uh, it's hard. But it does have a little give. I guess it's some sort of safety thing. I don't know. But uh, they did. They tried to match it very closely to the die cast piece, so I'm going to give them credit for that but very detailed. You can see some nice modules, different shapes like rectangles and squares. 
really cool and they did put that gray paint on there so it's like a wash so pretty nice coming to the main body here we have some nice shapes some line work it's all recessed in there which is great we have some nice little raised sections looking cool we have this section right here which looks very nice you can see nothing's flat on here everything has this like nice angle to it which is pretty cool you can see when i turn it back this way different pieces are at different heights so it's very nice very detailed coming down the sides here we can see some nice molding more line work we have our ion cannons on the sides only one barrel which is kind of weird should be uh, four and four on each side, so each cannon should have eight. Uh, but it is what it is. And then we have this nice triangle design here, which looks really cool. I like that quite a bit. And that's the same for this side. Again, our ion cannons. Beautiful molding right here, which looks great. And then going back up the main body, which looks really cool. Now I'm going to turn it just a bit. So we can look at the superstructure, which is the main body, right? That's where all the cool components are, this whole section. And you can see it does have like this curve to it. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like rounded right here. And I don't know, the original trilogy is all about industrial shapes. So it should be, uh, you know, angles like a staircase, but it does look cool. It's just my preference. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but looking at the detail here, you can see some beautiful molding. This is fantastic. You can see that rounded section right there, but really detailed, really nice. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments below. Look at this whole area. Now, this is one of the areas I'm talking about. When you think of Star Destroyers, it should drop off like this. But everything's rounded here. Maybe it's due to the molding process. Maybe it's easier to make a mold that's rounded. But uh, I don't know. It distracts me because I'm a stickler for details. But like I said, for a little model, this is great. I think it does look good. Just very nice. I love the detail in here really cool now for the next section we do have some details right here underneath the command tower so that looks cool and then for the actual command section look at the detail on this we have our bridge right here next to my fingernail which looks great and tons of little doodads in there we have our communications tower right here on top and on the sides we have our shield emitters or shield generators which look fantastic. Coming to the side, you can see the detail continues on the tower and also the back here. Look at that, fantastic stuff. They even detailed the communications tower. This is awesome. Now, this section is plastic. You could tell it doesn't really match the main body, but they tried. Nice on detail on the neck. And look at the top there. Beautifully done. Excellent stuff. Coming back here, we have detailing on the sides. Looking fantastic. All right, let's take a quick look at the engines here. And I do think they took some design liberties, but I think it does look cool. You can see how the whole interior is recessed in. We have our three main engines, nicely molded and painted. And then we have our interior, which looks really cool in my opinion. Lots of details in here. I think it came out great. Really nice. What do you guys think of the engines on here? Let me know in the comments below. Coming to the sides, I like to call this section the trench, because if you turn it like that, it looks like a trench. But I think they did a very good job here. Lots of little pipes and molding. Like, I think it came out good. Let 
really sharp. And in the front of the ship, you do have a slight mold in there. A couple little recessed areas right here, which looks really cool. And we have our molden, which again, I, I like it. Really nice. And we have our engine section again. Which, uh, it's pretty cool. Now for the bottom of the ship, you can see, again, we have some beautiful detail in here. Rivet. We have our secondary hangar bay. Little, you know, modified because of the rivet, but it's there. Our main hangar, which, look at the detail in there really cool i think that came out great really sharp nice coming down the sides you can see some more line work and that gray paint just goes in all these lines and really brings it to life i like it quite a bit we have our main reactor right here which has a socket for the stand another rivet copyright crap Again, very nicely done. More copyright crap over here. And the detailing continues. All in all, a fantastic looking vessel. Really cool. And that's everything I have to say about the mold. Hopefully I covered everything. I tried to be as thorough as possible, but also move quickly at the same time. Uh, this is a beautiful piece nicely detailed the mold is good uh, i will say this though i do think hot wheels did take some liberties with the actual design elements uh, mainly the engine section turbo lasers or i should say ion cannons and the superstructure but besides that it looks fantastic in my opinion i like this very much what do you guys think let me know in the comments below so now that we're done with the mold let's take a look at the paint and now taking a look at that paint, the Imperial Star Destroyer has only three colors. We have light gray, dark gray, and in the aft section on the engines, we have sky blue. It may seem simplistic, but let's face it, the Imperial Star Destroyers were never known for their extravagant paint jobs. I will say this though, if Hot Wheels really wanted to make a paint variant, which they're famous for, and I believe there's a battle damage version of this particular piece, they should totally make Thrawn's Chimera. I think that would be a great paint job on this piece. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. So that does it for the mold as well as the paint. So now let's put this bad boy on a stand, compare it to some other ships, and then we'll be done. And just like other Starship Select vehicles, it comes with this cool stand. Now I love the way this stand looks. We have glossy black here, very reflective, very clean. In the front, we have a little indent for Star Wars and Hot Wheels, looking sharp. And my favorite part of these stands, and what really sells it as a collector's item, is that we have silver paint for the faction symbol, the Imperials, and then the item name. So here we have Star Destroyer, trademark. <laughs> but this looks awesome and I really like it. Now you also get a pylon piece and this snaps in like so. You're gonna hear a click. And then you could grab your ship. So I'll grab the Star Destroyer right here. And you can see on the bottom, we have a little ball socket to fit the ball joint. And there you go, no clicks or anything. Now, I'm not a fan of these stands because of this joint. Granted, it gives you a lot of posability and ideas to rock it up and down and sideways and really give your ship some attitude when it's on the shelf. You no, know, you could pose it if you will. However, over time, the ball joints will get loose. So it's something you do have to keep in mind. But all in all, it does look amazing.
And now for a quick size comparison with the Hot Wheels Star Wars Starships Select Imperial Star Destroyer seen in the center, I have it next to some other Hot Wheels Starships in the 3 inch line. I miss this line quite a bit and hopefully it comes back one day. On the right hand side we have the Mon Calamari Cruiser, Home 1. And finally on the left hand side we have the Imperial Star Destroyer and we can see the massive size difference between all of these. And for a bonus size comparison with the Imperial Star Destroyer seen in the center, I have some other Starship Select vehicles. First on the right hand side we have the Razor Crest, looking sharp. And then finally on the left hand side we have the Imperial TIE Fighter. If you're interested in seeing any of the ships I showcased today, please check the links in the description below. And that does it today for my review of the Hot Wheels Star Wars Starship Select Imperial Star Destroyer released in late 2022. In my opinion, this is a fantastic piece. I love the detailing on it. I might be off in my opinion that I think they did take liberties with some design elements, but I love it anyway. I love the superstructures design and the whole plating, all the lines and little modules with the gray, paint really bring this to life i wish one day we could get a mark one star destroyer or the one from star wars rebels that would be amazing but for having this in the collection i'm very happy about it i think it looks awesome i love the ventral section as well the engines look great and the command section is beautiful i love the detailing on it especially the shield generators the communications tower and even the bridge is molded into here very nice stuff for the paint we only have about three different colors here gray a darker gray and light blue for the engines but it works you know the star destroyers mostly look white and gray anyway so it's awesome for the stand it looks amazing i'm never gonna say anything otherwise for this line uh the only issue i have is the ball joint I don't know, uh, hopefully they last, it's very tight on my Star Destroyer, but time will tell. So that's everything I have to say about this awesome looking ship today. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button. And if you want to see new videos every week, subscribe. As always, thank you everyone out there for taking time out of your hectic schedule to watch my content. I greatly appreciate it, and I hope to see you next time. Bye everybody.